All right, let's make sure streaming is coming through. Awesome, here we go. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome. Hey, King Clown, glad you're here. Let's just verify that the audio is working. I love the, I, Twitch is just so much better for delay. It's so nice, I'm really glad. Hey, Philip. Perfect, all right, so. As the graphic shows in front of you, today we're going to be making a bandit camp. So I'm excited about that. We're going to be using the fantasy battle map style for that. Battle maps are hot, hot, hot. Everyone needs their battle maps. Got to collect them all. All right. I'm just going to wait a couple more seconds and then we'll get it started. I'm excited to show you how to make a bandit camp. I mean, I think bandit camps are pretty stock. Hey, Bigfoot, welcome. Glad you're here. All right, okay. All right, let's just do in some announcements first. Just a quick reminder that this stream will be uploaded as a video to YouTube. Expect to see that tomorrow. So you can check it out there. Also, we have an art release coming up on Monday the 14th. Not telling you what it is, but we're going to be streaming live what that art is. And we're going to be making some fun stuff. And expect some time lapses made with that art as well. So super exciting. Get ready for that. And then we also have a Q&A live stream next week as well, Wednesday the 16th. So go ahead and make sure that if you have any questions concerning the editor, feel free to Go ahead and put those, com compose those questions, have them ready, and put them in the chat when we have that stream. Please, if you have any questions concerning like your bank, like your account information or any sensitive information like that, just leave that to our customer support. Please don't ask that in chat. We want to make sure your information is safe. Okay. Hey, Lily. Hello and welcome. Okay, so let's jump in. So we're going to be making a bandit camp, and again with the fantasy battle map style. This is just a graphic that I made. So I'll actually be making the background as well, and because it's super easy to make. And this is just the way that I kind of envision it. For me, a bandit camp is going to be located somewhere where it's kind of well hidden. People can't find it. And that, of course, that's what you want. As if you're a thief, if you're a bandit, you don't want people to know where you're hiding your stashes and where you're kind of camping out because then they can come and kill you, whether it's the law or adventurers. So when you pick your location for a bandit camp, always pick a location that's kind of well, um, well hidden so that it's not easily found. And there are a couple places that you can do that with. For this video, I'm going to create a kind of what's called a glade or a clearing and a glade is an opening in the forest where there's no trees and that's a great place to build it so i'm going to create what's called again a clearing or a glade and then put a bandit camp on in the center of that glade and we're going to consider defenses we're going to be considering elevation and lots of interaction because a bandit camp is where likely you're going to have a battle with a group of bandits. And so one thing that's really important when you're putting together a battle is to make uh, your environment to uh, create an environment that you can interact with, whether you're jumping on a giant rock and want to come down with a club or if you want to create like a ditch or a trap to push your enemies into. So we'll be factoring in uh, how combat will be carried out on this map as well. I mean, that's what you should be doing, right? So first, for, first I'm gonna just create, uh, make the entire canvas with the add mode like this. You just do a quick fill basically by just using the rectangle shape, go across, press enter. And then this will, the entire thing will be filled with the add mode. So now you have that. The next step is I'm wanting to create like a glade. So the way that I like to do glades is just to create a kind of a frame of trees that kind of go around the map. And then you just put some sh basic shrubbery beneath the trees and then some blending stuff with, with stamps. So let's do the first part. Let's go ahead and add trees. And we're just gonna create a glade. I'm gonna boost up the size just a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and just place them single click like this and create a nice frame and kind of create maybe like an oval shape that kind of creates a little opening right here where there's gonna be a path that leads into this glade. I'm gonna put just a couple more 
in the corner here. I don't want the frame to be too much. And I want to think about moving space. So I might push some things down and around because you don't want to create perfectly lined up frame like this where there's just a line of trees. That doesn't really look that realistic. Trees are going to be dispersed. They're going to be random. So as, of, as you're placing them, make sure to move some around so that the, there's not this straight line that's created by them. Push this in a corner here, move this one over like this. That should be okay. And maybe we'll push one over here like this. And you want to create a little bit of an entrance too, again, so you know where your players are walking. That looks like a smaller one, so I'll push it below. So you have this nice frame here. What I like to add next is some, is some plant life beneath. You can use bushes if you want. You can use uh, these ferns. This forest floor will be nice. I'm going to let do let the texturing that I'm going to be using do most of the work for me. So I'm going to place these and make sure that you focus on layers. Because if you're putting a plant, like a small fern, that's not going to be taller than a tree, right? So instead, you want to make sure that's a layer below your trees. Whenever you're doing what's called duff or shrubbery below uh, the trees, then what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is below that tree. So I'm going to push, to, just to be safe, push it down a couple layers so that I make sure it stays there. And as always, I like to do this thing where I start with kind of large sizes first and you just put place a couple of them. Make sure that they're sticking out of the trees a little bit because if they're just underneath the trees itself and you can't see it, then what's the point of putting them there? So you want to have just a couple. And so these are the big size, right? And I'm going to bring it down to like a medium size and just place a couple more next to the bit, each big one. I do this with all my videos. It's just to create a more natural feel. I mention this in a lot of my other, um, in some of the other streams or videos about making terrain. And I'll make sure to plug that as well in a card later. And then once you've done the medium size, just bring it down to even, just even smaller than that. So let's take it 30 something and just place a couple like this. And you're creating this nice transition between large, shrub and small shrub just place a couple it doesn't take too long to do all this stuff if you have a a method then it will take you will kind of cut down your work time and that's what you want especially if you're a dm you don't have time to make these incredibly beautiful artistic maps you're in a rush to get your map done before the campaign right because world building is taxing it's just so much work right so you don't have the time or maybe not the artistic ability not yet to kind of make these rich incredible maps so instead learn a series of techniques to speed up your time so i started with large trees first made some plant life i used that technique of large to small to kind of create more transition and then it ends up looking nice so now we've done that we've done 106 changes i'm going to save highly recommend you save about 100 changes or so you know you're obviously not going to get a smack on the hand or anything if you don't but it's always good to be safe because it's a web tool, right? And things can happen. Your internet can go out, power outages, these kind of things. So, and you can always do backups. Okay. If you don't know where a backup is, you can save right here as a back, save as an offline backup. So if your internet goes out, quickly save an offline backup and then you can load it later on your My Map screen. Okay. But around, me personally, about 100 changes, sometimes I get lost in what I'm doing or if you're placing a thousand trees on a world map, of course you're gonna be coming up with a lot of changes. That happens, that's okay. But when you're doing small things where it's not racking up huge amounts, go ahead and just save 100 or so every often and if your internet goes out, you get an error pop up, go to that back line, back, <laughs> offline backup option. So now that we've done that, the next step is texturing. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and use a dirt texture for in here because a lot of the grass is gonna be kind of taken away because there's a lot of people moving around, the thieves are moving around and there's gonna be a lot of traffic and stuff like that. And so a lot of grass isn't being built or isn't growing because it's being trampled on all the time. So also I recommend using the edgy brush for smoothing things out. The edgy brush is fantastic and it works great for texturing. Just make sure that if you do uh, use the edgy brush, do it for all of your texturing on, on a single map. Going in between can look kind of weird between a soft brush and an edgy brush. And that's just my, that's just my opinion. It's not a fact. Let's get rid of the smooth. And then I'm also going to 
maybe increase the size and drop the opacity. One thing with the edgy brush is there's no smooth for the edgy brush. So you have to drop the opacity down quite a bit. And just in this opening clearing area, I'm going to go ahead and do that and just make it FG. Remember to switch over one key for the FG. And I'm just going to, in the center here, start with a little bit of dirt like this. And then from there, I can just start making it a little bit more. So just kind of single click drag and kind of just create this nice muddy, dirty, not necessarily muddy, but dirty area where there's been traffic. The next step is to kind of create what's called duff. And duff is all the, the, the leaves, bark, and dust that falls off of trees and falls onto the ground. That's called duff. And that's what forest fires are, are, are catch fire because of that large amount of fallings from the trees. That's called duff. And that stuff is extremely dry and can catch on fire because it's protected by the canopy of the tree. Again, it's called duff. And I'm going to be using, uh, let's say, this grass texture right here. You'll see there's some nice browns and some greens in that, and that's perfect for duff. And so I'll be doing that same thing. Let's just boost it up a little bit more. I'm going to put it underneath the trees like this, and let's just boot make the size a little bit smaller. And you can see a nice kind of brown underneath and that's great because that brown also causes the green of your trees to pop out because it's contrasting that nice brown against the green so add that in like that and as you know if you have a lot of bunch of if you have a bunch of trees like this make sure that the kind of little openings are really dark underneath because that represents kind of the interior or the deeper parts of the wood i'm gonna go ahead and make sure that i put these a little bit as well into here going out a little bit like this. So you got a little bit of duff, that's nice. And then I like to just bring the size down and just do little tiny single clicks. And a single click is a nice transition. So if you have this huge blob and it looks weird, single clicks along the edges kind of creates that smooth transition. So now we have a nice open clearing where our bandit camp is gonna be. We're at 153 changes, let's go ahead and save that. Always the better be safe than sorry. It's called Duff. Duff. It's called Duff. <laughs> uh, is that is that like um from what's that stuff from oh, Futurama where they have that soda and it's got that weird funny name? It just reminds me of Duff. <laughs> Slurm or something. <laughs> it's like snail ooze or something. <laughs> yes, it's called Duff. I'll say that eight more times just in case you don't remember the word Duff. <laughs> Okay, we've saved it. Now we got to factor in our bandit camp. And there'll be more texturing to go to go as well as we move forward because we want to blend in whatever stamps that we're adding for the camp. Where are we at? 11 minutes, plenty of time. Perfect. Let's go over to our catalog. And one thing that I want is that I want to create a, a an environment that it's going to be highly interactive. So maybe adding some fallen trees and stuff like that would be nice so let's add it in here and i want to put these a layer below as well let's have one sticking out like this and we'll stick a couple more sticking out that'd be kind of nice and then maybe another one let's go with right here that looks good okay and then we also want to add in some logs because i would expect that there's going to be some chopped wood so let's just add just a couple a couple over here all right just some random details in there maybe even a smaller one just for fun okay now we're going to add think about our where how the whole thing is going to be set up we want to think about defenses we want to think about maybe a fire pit where they can cook food if they're hunting they're going to want a place to cook their food obviously if they're stealing they're going to want to create some kind of place to put their cash and so we'll have to create that and obviously some place to sleep so I would think that maybe first let's create like maybe a sleeping area or we could go with maybe uh, a defensive position. So you could take like a, a large rock and then maybe put like a ladder going up to that rock. And this is a perched area where, you know, it's next to the entrance. And let's go ahead and actually add another texture as well. And I've mentioned this before. I absolutely love this texture. It's called dry grass. And it works perfect for kind of dirt. And I'm going to go ahead and create a path as well. One sec while I set that up. Let's go put it over here. 
Let's go up even more. There we go. Okay. There we go. I'll have a little bit of path here like this. All right. And we'll put even some random dirt around like this. We can add, add more dirt once we've created kind of locations and stuff because we want to create foot traffic paths, things like that. Okay. Let's zoom in and take a look. Zooming in, mouse scroll wheel. And don't forget you can pan with that space bar. All right, let's go ahead and make a large rock and that's going to be like a little perch and it's like a defensive position so if people kind of wander in there's a place let's say that you have an archer or an arbalist or something like that someone armed with a crossbow who can shoot and of course when you're higher up that gives you better range so it's a nice defensive position i'm just going to type in rock and i'm going to use one that has a little bit of space at the top of it and also, I'm gonna make sure it's set to the right layer. I'm gonna put a nice rock. Let's see here how I wanna put it. I wanna think about if people are walking in here like this, we find to find a nice location that's gonna be well defended. So we can put it like this maybe, and then put a ladder on this side. So that way it's kind of protected from any bolt fire or anything or a spell. So you're kind of protected. I'm gonna remove that shadow and I'm just gonna work on shadows later. I like to save that for last. So we'll figure out where our light source is later. So there's a nice rock. I'm going to add in a ladder. I'm going to make it a rickety one instead of a nice one. It's kind of a bandit camp. This isn't a library. It's a bandit camp. So we'll go with a rickety one. I'm just going to make it just big enough to where it can kind of lean up against like this. There we go. So you have a nice position right here. And we're also going to want to blend that rock in as well, and I like to use some kind of texture that kind of works with that same gray. So using another gray texture is a good idea. Go ahead and get out of the search field. Let's go with, ooh, I'm pretty sure there's some nice gray texture that we can use here. Let's go with this lighter one right here maybe. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna bring down the opacity quite a bit, take the size. I'm just going to go like this. I'm just going to do a couple clicks. And again, always do that single click technique to kind of create the transition. And then I'm going to create, put some other rocks as well. They're going around it. Because the thing is, is, you have this solo rock and you expect kind of weathering and stuff to happen. And so I'm going to take some smaller rocks and place them around in that kind of grayish area that I've created. So I just type in rock again, and there should be some smaller ones that you can put on there. Just type in rock, there should be some small ones. There we go, that works just fine. And I'm just gonna rant, place them kind of randomly, just the same way that I did the bushes. I made some larger ones and then some smaller ones. Put a couple here like this, and then just make them extra small. And just place a couple like this. And then you can also do, if you want, you can also use uh, a texture as well to do that. You don't have to put individual rocks. There are some rock textures that you can use. Uh, this looks kind of bright. Let's just apply it real quick and see how it looks. Might not be the right size, but we can put in a couple just for fun here like this. It's just extra, kind of extra texturing. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I think that looks okay. 174 changes, let's save. And then, so that's our defensive position. That's a nice one. So as people walk, let's say that the bandits are using an old deer trail, which is deers sometimes will use the same trail to get to water, like a water source, like a river or something. And those trails are perfect. You can follow those trails. Maybe the thieves uh, maybe killed uh, some deer or elk that were living in this clearing and, you know, they decided to make it their, to make it their bandit camp. So, I mean, whatever you want. So now that there's that, let's go with thinking about how we want to go about sleeping. Where do we want to put our sleeping arrangement? Maybe we want to put sleeping in a place that kind of makes you not prone to ambush. So if you're going this way over here, people can, you're in direct view. So maybe putting some camps or some bed rolls or depending on the climate, we can put some tents over in this area right here. I think that's kind of the best place to put it, I would think. That is a great tip. Thank you very much. Perfect. All right, let's do, let's take a look here. Let's go ahead and add in our camps. 
Yeah, scale is super important. I kind of just use my eye, but if you're using a scale when it comes to your tents, or sorry, I just typed in scale. <laughs> wow, uh, that's hilarious. All right, I'll type in tent. Yeah, scale is super important. Generally, just leave the stamps within the same within the same range. This is 56. This one's at 66. It's about 10% bigger, but you know, I mean, it's okay. Just try not to go too far out. Like you obviously don't want to create, you know, a ladder that's this big. That's way out. Try to keep it within 10, about 10% or so. And let's also push this one up a layer. I've noticed I got some rocks that are right on top of it. Oopsie, that won't work. So you got that ladder. Let's add in some tents. And I don't know how many bandits you want. You can have uh, maybe five or six, just depending on how big you want your band to be. Now you have this ladder right here. So you have a general idea of kind of how big a person is. So then you might want to scale up your stamp to fit that general size. And I'm also factoring in the size of the tree. Let me see what my trees are at. They're at 206. Let me go back to tent real quick. Just want to make sure that I keep them. So at 206, they're absolutely massive, I'm sure. Yep, we don't want it to be that big. We're going to scale it down just, just a little bit. For some reason, I'm having some loading issues. Just one moment. There we go. About this size, maybe just a, t a tad bit smaller. I think about this should be right. So let's go ahead and add in a couple. I'm going to put them also beneath because they're obviously not taller than a tree. So I'm going to place a couple of them sticking out underneath the trees. Let's add in another one right here like this. Okay, and I, you're gonna have, obviously gonna have to move some of the, uh, otherwise you're gonna be sleeping on a giant fern and that will probably not be, not be comfortable. So you might have to move things a little bit and that's okay. Cause we didn't do any texturing underneath these and they're always prone to be moved. You're always gonna make some changes to your map. That's just normal. You might not be satisfied. So know that when you're, after you make your background, space, you're probably going to make some changes and that's okay. Let's go ahead and move this stuff out of the way and we can put another tent over here. Maybe a circular one right here. We can put this one, oh, let's say it's kind of big so we can scale it down just a hair. That's fine. And we can put that one maybe over here. And that looks like that fits a couple people. This can fit one or two. So you're looking at maybe a max of about six about six bandits. You can add more if you want to, that's up to you. But I think six is quite a, quite a few. There are more. Your mind is working as fast as your body. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right? <laughs> 19 changes, we got three tents here. About two people, yeah, I'm gonna say about two. All right, and you're kind of shielded a little bit with this rock right here, that's kind of nice. Let's just go ahead and rotate this a little bit more. I kind of want the heads of the tent or the openings of the tent to be facing towards the center of the clearing. Obviously you don't want to go through this wooded area and go in the back and you can be kind of ambushed. So it's kind of nice to have a front in here. You can get out of your tent, immediately man this section right here. Maybe we can put like a crossbow on top of this just to show that there's somebody is carrying a crossbow up there. So now that we have kind of our living arrangements, we can go on to that next step, which is probably gonna be like a fire pit, some place that they can kind of uh, eat their food, right? They've caught, they're doing, caught some food. Maybe they have hunt some deer or whatever. So they're gonna need a place for that. Let's just go ahead and have the campfire going. And we can put this, um, I don't want to, I got to think about where I want to put this and see if I look at the size. We have some nice rocks right here. So what we can do is also size up or size them down to fit around the same size of these rocks. And I want to look also at these logs as well. This is very small logs. These are large logs. Okay. Just want to make sure that I'm kind of looking at things and making sure the scale is right. And we want to think about where we want to put the campfire. There's this nice space open right here. So I can think just right here will be nice. And then also underneath your campsites, I mentioned this in a camp video, is that you wanna maybe put some stone, some rocks, or put something that's not gonna catch fire underneath. So use a texture that's maybe stone or something that will kind of uh, make sure that you don't you know, catch your camp on fire.
So we'll take some of this stone, maybe even uh, some, some, some moss in between would work kind of nice. And we'll go ahead and just put, do a couple clicks real quick. I just want to see the size. They, those do look absolutely massive. So let's undo that and let's bring the size down. As the dungeon madam had mentioned, let's bring these down. I think that should be okay. And let's just go ahead and place like this and then single click it with a smaller size. Let's just go with one like this. And that way, because we're doing the single click again to kind of create these transitions. And then we also want to uh, maybe create some flow of traffic. And so let's put maybe a little bit of dirt around the campfire and then kind of leading to uh, each tent entrance. Where are we at for time? 24, perfect. Right, there we go. And let's also create kind of a, tr a path leading to here, like that. Let me take a look at where we're at here. So far, so good. Yeah, I like this so far. I'm gonna scale down some of these ferns. They are absolutely massive. I realize those are a little out of scale and I'm sure some of you were kind of twitching your eyeballs a little bit like, whoa, dude, those ferns are people size, <laughs> whoa. What is this? <laughs> what what period? What age is this the <laughs> what age is this in this person's world? <laughs> Plants are this big. <laughs> All right, 126 changes. Let's save. Should do some. Oh, I should Lily Rose. I should do some uh, mapping speed run sessions. I should. I always use I always use the same kind of techniques and a mode of operations when making maps and that just makes it go by so much quicker. If you have a good mo modus operandi, I can tell you right now, it will totally speed up your process. And for me, that's the point of all these videos is to provide a process to kind of speed it up. Again, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, not everyone has time to, you know, make this incredibly artistic map and, you know, but you also want to make your map look interesting. And that's where, you know, these kind of tutorials come in handy. So now that you have a nice kind of place for your fire, we can even make it just a teeny bit bigger, I think. Even bigger than that. We can make it a fairly decent size. So then we have that. And just like with a campsite, maybe you want to have some stools or some logs where people are kind of sitting down. And so I'm going to scale this log to maybe around a similar length to these rungs on this ladder. And then I'm going to go ahead and just place them in a ring around it because you know sometimes you don't want to stand by the fire you want to just be a lazy butt and just kind of sit and so we'll kind of create a couple of them like this maybe put another one over here so you have some some logs here to people to place their bums when they want to sit by the nice warm fire on a cool night or maybe it's a cool morning cool whatever so you have that and that's kind of nice we also want to think about maybe where are uh these where are these thieves or bandits kind of hiding their stash where, where do they hide their stash do they have a stash you know and if you want to make a battle map of course you always want to factor in a reward too like what's the point of going to this bad going to this bandit camp you know beating the poop out of these guys and then finding out that you know there's no reward for it so you know you can add in a chest uh maybe on the outside you could say that there's a chest maybe inside one of the tents. I'm just gonna put a chest on the outside so it's just visible and that it's there or maybe hide it with some camouflage, like maybe put some vines over it, okay? Cause maybe there's not enough room in the tent to have this chest of, you know, a booty. So we're gonna put the booty outside. Let's go ahead and look for a chest and we'll add in details as well. I always add details in last. Let's add in a chest. Let's make it kind of have a metal cage on it so it's kind of locked. And let's put it well hidden away here. And let's also cover it in vines. Again, we're gonna move some of these giant ferns out of, oh, there's another giant one right here. Oopsie. This fern is so big. This fern is on steroids. Okay, or serious fertilizer. Okay, so we'll put the chest in here. And in fact, we might even wanna have some fun and kind of place this thing in a way so it's kind of hiding let's go and put that fern up 
above like this. Oopsie, this one, my bad. This one can go up. There we go. Actually, let's just delete it and get rid of it. Put that there. And then I'm gonna put a bunch of vines over it. So it's kind of camoed, you know, like in the military where they cover stuff with netting or with some kind of camouflage. And that's what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna be adding some camo to this because you don't want people to just be able to just stroll into your camp and be like, ha ha, all your booty is mine. Well, no, that's good. Your booty is your booty. And you don't want to give that booty to nobody. You know what I'm saying? So now we've got this kind of camouflaged here. And one thing that's also nice is maybe we can also add some fallen leaves as well. I think there is a leaf. Let me see if there is a leaves alpha. I'm not sure. Leaves is there. Uh, it looks like there is fallen leaves right here. Perfect. And let's check the size. Of course, I think about that looks good. And I'm also going to place those uh, kind of around where the camouflage is and maybe around the edge. Let's make sure that my opacity is fully up. And we'll just place a couple along this edge here. You got some leaves. There we go. I mean, you're going to expect some fallen leaves. The wind's blowing. Leaves are going to be falling around. If you don't have leaves everywhere, that's going to be kind of weird. So let's just add a couple leaves. There we go. We've got that. 70 changes. Ah, we're still we're still good. We can probably keep going. Let's just scale down this a little bit. Let's think about a maybe a wood pile. And I'm just going to take these and just kind of just use these for that. So let's maybe create a little wood pile. And I'll show you the trick that I like to do when making wood piles. And it's just the same technique that I always use. And that is you just create one row at a time. And the bottom row is going to be the darkest. So if I was just to piece a couple of these together, let's say you want to put just a couple of them. Let's make that slightly bigger. And you're always going to have to factor in where the layer is when you do this. And also, let's look at the size of these logs and make sure that we kind of scale it down right as well. Let's look at it here. This looks about right. Perfect. If if it was any bit bigger, those logs wouldn't even fit in that fire pit. We can put a couple larger ones. Always put a little bit of variation. When you chop your logs, they're not always going to be the same. They're going to be varying kind of sizes and lengths. And let's just add in one more. And we'll put it down a layer underneath like this. Oopsie. And let's just go ahead and work on this in an area where there's not a lot of stamps selected so i'm gonna go ahead and just unselect this if i can oh my goodness there's a nice open space here when you're kind of putting composing or putting a bunch of stamps together for a composition make sure you find a nice open space or just lock everything or lock whatever is in that vicinity so you don't accidentally select it because that can be a huge problem i'm going to select all of these they're already selected what am i doing Jeez, please. <laughs> Go to advanced settings and I'm going to drop the brightness down just a little bit. I'm going to copy and paste that same thing. I'm going to bring them down a size and kind of boost the brightness up. And then also bring these up a layer so they're on top. And let's just try maybe rotating them like this. And if you want, you can just stack it on top like this. Make them a little bit smaller if you want. And you might have to factor in rotating a couple so that it fits right. But that is kind of how I make my wood pile, like that. And then just group it. And as always, you should probably just name it immediately. So we're running, we're already at 30 minutes, so I don't want to take up too much time. You can put the wood pile wherever you want. Cut it closest to the fire works best. You could put it like maybe behind one. Maybe there's an official title for one of the, the thieves or bandits to be to take care of the fire. Who knows? I also might want to consider boosting the saturation on this just a little bit. Because I always like to make, add, just boost a little bit. We'll focus on filters to kind of do a lot of that as well. Let's go ahead and save. And we'll add some last details, like maybe some crates, a barrel. Those are always kind of a go-to for if you don't know what to add. Okay. We're just going to save this real quick. We're going to be done real soon. We're only just about 5 to 15 minutes maybe. I try to keep these as short as possible. Okay, so and now we've still left a lot of open space for combat. And that's that's what I kind of want. You can still climb up this thing. 
there's a fire going on right here. Maybe you kind of corner your enemies and push them into the fire, push them into the fire. Um, there's a lot of different options for combat when you're going through that. Let's see what else can be put into this open space. If you want, you can add maybe a different kind of, um, maybe you want to change the terrain, maybe add in a couple cliff pieces to make look like there's like a pit or something or whatever. You can change it up to what you see fit. Right now, this seems like a lot, so there's a lot to interact with here. But I do want to uh, actually put in some longer logs because I want people to kind of, maybe you want to trip someone over a log, you want to kick it, maybe use it as a weapon, whatever. So it's nice to have a little bit, like maybe a long log or something that you can use or hide behind or whatever. So let's just add maybe a, just a pile of large logs, maybe. That would be a nice kind of extra thing to add in there. Or if you want, you can add in uh, some kind of defenses or something. You can put the logs right here. So there's an extra sense of kind of uh, defenses if you want. So it's not just as easy as just strolling into the camp. You have to navigate, navigate, navigate. <laughs> you have to navigate kind of around these fallen logs. Or if you want, you can add in some kind of barricade. Uh, like, a, let's see, I think there might be a palisade wall. You could add in some kind of defense, like a palisade wall like this. If you wanted to. It's up to you. Just what I mean, how much defenses do you want these bandits to have? You know, are they extremely successful and they can afford all this stuff and they're trying to put all this stuff together, or are they just kind of running your run of the mill bandits? You know, to figure out how you want that to be. I guess it's you as a DM. It depends how much backstory and how much information and you don't I don't know what your backstory might be for this, but always kind of factor in some kind of defenses. Obviously, your bandits don't want to be caught off guard and they want to kind of protect themselves because they're going to be wanted by Zilla, okay? Or mercenaries like yourselves who are being commissioned or, you know, to hunt these guys down and take them out. So it's really up to you about that. I'm just going to add some logs. I think that's kind of the easiest way to kind of set up some defense, some defenses. It's a bit easier than trying to build a palisade wall. So just kind of make it difficult for intruders to kind of navigate when they first go in. And that kind of gives you or gives the bandits kind of an advantage and you as the players a disadvantage. So we'll add in that. You can even add in some smaller ones, whatever. And then you obviously you want to blend that in. You can add in some textures underneath or you can add in like an alarm system. Maybe you want to create some string and then maybe there's some bells on it. I mean, it's just whatever you want. Obviously, your bandits are going to try to protect themselves. They're not going to leave themselves completely open to attack. And it just makes it more fun for combat. Like maybe you want to sneak through all this stuff without making noise and you want to don't want to wake up the bandits. Maybe you can get the advantage as the players over the bandits by coming in at night. So you add in a night filter and you want to be really quiet. Maybe you can sneak in without being heard. So just all those things you can kind of factor in. I'm also going to create uh, a little bit more texturing underneath this log pile here. So that dry grass works good. And I think there's also some a twig one as well. Let's just stick with dry grass first. Let's put, place a lot of dry grass underneath here like that. And then also I think there's one for twigs and branches. It might be under forest. Let me check. Ooh, let me see here. Uh, ooh, I see. Oh, there it is right there. Twigs and stones. This one will look pretty good. You might have to resize this one to whatever size you kind of want them to be. And you might have to rotate them because what I want is to kind of maximize the most of these uh, artifacts in this alpha texture to be underneath the logs. So I'm rotating it to where I can kind of get that. So I add a twig here, there, underneath here, along here. There we go. Some nice twigs there because, you know, twigs snap. You know, it's a common trope in, in television shows. You know, you accidentally step on a twig and snap. It somehow it just wakes up everybody and alerts them immediately to your <laughs> to your presence. It's a pretty common trope, so we can put that in here. You're gonna, your players are going to be navigating, trying to quietly get into this bandit camp and not get caught. All right, so the last bit is some where is we're going to do details, and then we're going to do... Uh, the shadowing and we're going to try to fit that all within within the next 15 minutes or so so details first 
And I think adding in some basic stuff, you don't have to add in a whole lot of details, but I want to add in some basic stuff that you would expect kind of in a campsite. Bandits are people too. Bandits are people too. Okay. And they have likes and wants. So I like to add in just, just a few details to kind of give some character to your bandits, like adding in maybe a uh, man, I'm not sure what this is, a mandolin, clearly not a guitar, but some kind of stringed instrument. And I put this in a lot of my, my maps. Maybe I want to put it over a log and then maybe I want to add some kind of, maybe a water jug of some kind, a backpack. Uh, maybe you want to put in like a bucket because there's got to be a poo hole somewhere. So you got to build that. And we can just put that over here. So there's a bucket here for that. And maybe we can put some poop over there. And I think... We can do this and just put it right over there and make it away from your, <laughs> make it away from your people. Yeah, those thieves poop a lot. Dang, they, they got issues, don't they? Big, big issues. I just want you to know. And let's just go ahead and add in some kind of dirty texture as well. Like this, because we're going to make kind of a brownish texture underneath. There you go. That's where the pool hoe is. All right. Good. The sausage stamp also makes great poop, says the dungeon madam, and I absolutely concur. It makes the finest poop. I just want you to know, the finest poop that you can find. Okay, let's add in that water jug, maybe some a backpack, stuff like that. Just a couple things to kind of show that there's, you know, people living here. <laughs> it kind of helps. Let's go ahead and put uh, a jug maybe. Oh, wait a minute. Let's put a water jug over next to one of these like this over by the logs and then maybe put an axe as you would expect so we'll put in an axe it, it might not pop up it might be under tool just so you know so if you just type in tool it should show up in tools and there should be a little axe right there just a, just a little nice axe just for you to use there and i'll just lean it up against maybe up against like this okay so you have a nice axe there let's see here we got a uh, an instrument we got this we have an axe and then uh, we also have the pool hole area plenty of area plenty of space for combat to kind of take place let's also add in a weapon at the top to kind of show that there is uh if you just i think it should be under weapons oh there's the crossbow right there perfect awesome i'll just put that right on top up here oops you might have to go up a layer there we go that looks nice all right so I'm just going to quickly go kind of go over how I would do a combat, go through here, trying to sneak through this. There's a little spot right here. Maybe you could sneak through, but hey, there is a, a guard and there should always be a guard there. I would expect bandits to have like a rotating uh, kind of thing. So maybe you want to take out your take out the guard right away while you're hidden in the tree or in the shrub area. Boom! Take them out with an arrow or something. I don't know, maybe a spell. Take that person out as quietly as possible. If that fails, these guys are going to come out of their tents and get ready for combat. And you have lots of things to interact with. You killed the person up here. You're able to quickly get up top here, get an advantage. Maybe you can take down some people with a crossbow quickly before they come out of their tents. Or maybe you were able to silence the guard kill them quietly before that so you can kind of go in and take people out in their sleep maybe you killed one one screams out so think about that combat can be rich it can be fun it can be exciting it can be more than just i hit you the bad guy hit me i hit you again you know this this <laughs> that's not going to be very fun combat so think about that let's go ahead and do the next step which is i want to have shadows for everything so i have to think about where a light source will be and so i'm going to go in first and just kind of just choose a light source and you your light source can be anywhere you want it i usually just put it in the same place just for the ease because if your if the light source is just straight down there will be no projected shadows in one direction or the other so if it's the middle of the day it's noon there's going to be no shadows projecting in any direction the shadow will just be straight down so where things are currently is just fine i mean the shadows looks like for these logs is a little bit to the left and a little down Okay, but if you're just doing noon, then you don't have to worry about changing the shadows in any way. If you want to do direction, I always recommend just taking a light stamp, putting it on layer positive 5 or 5, and just choosing a place 
uh, to have the sun. So if you're doing like a sunrise or a sunset, you can put a light source over here or over here like this. And then all your lights, all your shadows are going to have to be projecting away from where that light source is. Just to keep the video short and I'm and, and whatnot, I'm not going to do that. We're just going to say that it's high noon and therefore all the light sources are all the shadows are kind of fine as they are. If you want, you can move, you can change it from high noon to 1 p.m. or 11 a.m. and then kind of tilt the shadow to the left or to the right a little bit. So that if you want to portray shadows, that's okay. Like with these ones, I don't I think all of these just have your typical object shadow and they're set a little bit like this. So if you want, you can add in shadows and place them all at the same amount. So if I just click everything like this, if I want to, I think there is a group. If you have a group selected, I don't think all the options will pop up for stamps. And you can just go in and just go to object like this, and it's gonna select everything. And then I'm just gonna change it to just zero because it's high noon. There's no reason to put the shadows in a direction. And if you want, if you want the shadow to pop out more, just boost up the shadow opacity. And then you can also shoot it out more by just include, increasing the blur. And you'll notice that there's a darker shadows now around everything. And that kind of helps to make things pop out just a little bit. So you have those shadows. So now things aren't just, just flat. Shadows are what help to make things pop out. Ooh, maybe a cauldron for cooking stuff. Oh, hey, I love that idea. Let's do that. Great idea. Good thinking. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, just put one on the side, like right here somewhere. Like this right here. And then I do think if you're going to have a cauldron and you want to be able to put it over the fire pit, you have to create uh, some kind of mechanism for the, the pot to hang on. I know that the handle is already down right here like this, so that might not work. Uh, you can put it on top. I like to show it, but if you want, you can put it on there. And if you want to show that there's some kind of light underneath it, just take that light source like this and put it on top and make it kind of sticking out a little bit. And then make sure that the cauldron is on top of that light stamp. It's not, you see? So let me put it up above. There you go, like that. And you can increase the light stamp or increase its saturation or brightness if you want it to just pop out a little bit more. Oopsie, that makes it look kind of green. I don't like that. That's a boo-boo. Let's not do that. Okay. Let, oh, I realize I picked the wrong thing. Okay. Go ahead and boost up. There we go. And then put this on top of that. There you go. So that way you have some light. And it's up to you where you want to put it. Put it here or put it on top. It's up to you. If you're going to make some kind of mechanism for it to hang, then I recommend you make one. If not, uh, we should look into maybe, uh, I don't know the name of it. It's a, what is the name of that? It's not necessarily a rotisserie, but it's something that you can hang a pot on top of over a fire, uh, unless you want to put like a grill on top of it. Uh, I don't, that's not, might not be necessary. You could just make some kind of uh, a place to hang it. I'm not sure what to call it. If anyone has the name of it, that'd be great. But this is basically something that uh, where this cauldron is going to be hanging from this. And I'm just going to use a series of wood pieces. This is, these are the two posts on east end, each end that are coming out of the ground and then holding this bar that goes across. This would be my suggestion if you want to make it to where it's hanging over like this, but you're obviously going to have to make it big enough to where these wooden posts are away from uh, the fire pit. So I'm going to undo that real quick and then just increase the length like this so it's farther away from the rocks. Oh, it's not quite so. This, let's see if that works a little bit better. Yeah, so you could create something like that if you wanted to. It's up to you or put a metal grill on top of it just like you would see at a normal camp. It's up to you how you wanna go about it. I personally think I'm just going to have it on the side right here. That's fine. And because there is a light source projected there, we might wanna move the light source away from the campfire. And you could can do the same for all of these logs and, and stuff as well if you want to. I would, I'm not gonna do that here. It's, it's not complicated. You're just gonna use the X and Y offsets from the, the shadow options, that's these horizontal and vertical offsets to move the shadow. Just know that when you're selecting a lot of stamps, 
and you're affecting all of the shadows, sometimes it's really dangerous. I just want to show this real quick. Let's say that you have a really large stamp and a really small stamp. And you want to select both of these and control the shadow. Just know that there's, you're going to come across an issue of decoupling. So you notice here that I'm using the same settings for both, but the smaller one has a shadow that's decoupled basically from this small fern, but not this one. So you're going to want to edit small objects, shadows, and large object shadows separately so you don't run into that problem. And this is going to be a problem, so just be careful when you do that, okay? All right, 87 changes. Let's go ahead and save. Does anyone else have any suggestions? Cook a boar. Oh, just a wooden stick to cook a boar. Mmm, nummy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we're just about done. I think we've kind of uh, added everything. It's We're reaching that hour mark. I think it kind of has a nice uh, setting. It's You have things to interact with. The last thing is just to add add filters and there's a couple filters that I always add this is just me personally uh, I like to always add a clarity filter and the reason why is because something that we've kind of noticed is is that maps that are really bright and pop out are gonna get more views both on reddit and on the explore page and probably on your profile so clarity is a great filter to use to kind of make all that color just really pop out and that's super nice so that's one filter that you can add. The next filter I like to add, especially with one like this where you have kind of a frame of trees, is to use a vignette filter. And that vignette filter is going to create a little bit of darkness around that edge to make that center area kind of pop out a little bit more. So that's really kind of nice to do. So you have these nice dark areas and that kind of creates that center space popping out more it's something that i do i don't do it with every single map because it just a, this filter works with certain maps but with this one with an enclosure with a uh not an enclosure but with a glade like this it works quite well and there are other ones that i like to add as well i also like to add just a little bit more texturing and what i like to use is a a texture filter for that just one second and we'll let it come up and i like to add a particular one in general and it's found in parchment so when you open up the catalog and you notice that you don't have all of them here if you click search all styles just allow for the styles to show up into the left panel here and you'll see them all pop up so you have to click the search all styles I'm gonna go to parchment world and you'll see a nice one called old paper and you click that now it wasn't this particular filter wasn't designed for this style so it's not going to have uh, default uh, settings that make it that are optimal to this style so you'll have to do it yourself I like to use overlay and then uh, I'll go ahead and zoom in and you can kind of see the difference so I'll go ahead and turn it off and you can kind of see what it looks like so there it is without, and see it added a whole bunch of texture texturing to it. So I'll go ahead and click it again, you can see it. And I also like to click repeat instead. It's just my personal choice, and you can change the size to whatever you want, it's up to you. But it adds in some additional texturing, it, add, it kind of adds some artifacts, and it kind of gives it kind of a nice grungy look as well. And you can even push it down a layer if you want, if you feel that it kind of overpowers clarity. And that just kind of gives it kind of that nice grungy feel and the extra artifacts that I like. And I think that's just about it. If there's any questions, let me let Philip know or let me know. And if you don't have any questions, then we'll go ahead and call it good. This was a great stream. We kept it under an hour. Uh, we got a lot done. And I hope that you enjoyed my funny voc funny words. As one user says, I do I do use funny words. I am. I am funny. I'm just a funny, weird person, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's it. If there's no more questions, really appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. That next stream is next week. It's that art release. <laughs> excited to show you an art release. And there'll probably be some time lapses that come with that. So super excited about that. Again, that's Monday the 14th right here on our Twitch channel, new art for the fantasy regional style. <laughs> Exciting. We've been giving so much to battle maps that, it, you know, kind of feels like the, uh, the regional style has been maybe 
kind of neglected. So we'll fix that. So again, thank you everybody so much. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Merry map making. And I will see you on the 14th of next week. Merry map making, everybody.